Alright guys, so Joseph and I read the section on freedom, and one of the points that the author makes is about our work hours. Um, most of us don't want to be stuck into a window of, like, a set window of like 8 to 5. Most of us would want a smaller or maybe even a larger range than that. Another point that he makes is about having multiple jobs. Most of our generation has kept on, like, held on to our job, our first job, for around like three years. And the author says that that's not really the best thing. We want to experiment and find out what we like. And if we hold on to that first job, then it might not be challenging for us later on in life. So then we'd have to go and uh, start the beginning step again. Um, he also makes a point that about our workplaces. Um, most of us, including myself, would not want to be stuck into an office all day. We'd want to roam around and you know bring our laptop to places. And also, some of us modify our home so that we have computers and laptops and other technologies inside of our home so that we can work there. Another good point that he makes is that technology has given us the freedom to uh, enhance our education. So in the old days, before you know computers and stuff, we have to walk over to the library and look up a book on a topic. But now we can just look up on our phone and find out what we need to know. And that's basically it on freedom. Okay, we did customization, and it's all about our generation wanting to make everything our own, from basic pages to wallpapers and ringtones. And it makes us different from the generation before us because they didn't want to do anything. They just wanted to have what they got, like a PDA. This guy wanted a PDA, and he got one, and his friend decided to customize it for him, like putting his favorite bands on there and everything, like birthdays and stuff. And he didn't want it, so he didn't use it. He just wanted just it to work. And that's the part from us because we want everything to like, be personalized and have everything to be our own. And that's totally a cool generation for us. And, and that's pretty much customization. We're going to teach about scrutiny today. Scrutiny is uh, discovering, doing investigations. And what we're doing is we're going to knock on a door and then run away. And they're going to see who, it, who they think it is. Nick is walking this way, Cole's walking this way. We're going to see if the guidance office. Shh, shh, Sebastian. We're going to see if they catch us. Are they catching us? They're not even knocking. Mitch is over. He's hiding. Nobody answers the guidance office. Well, it looks like they're not going to, they're not going to investigate in the discussion about scrutiny, some of the, the, the trick the guys did on uh, knocking on the door and running to see who would catch them is, is kind of funny because it does fall along with the way we cruise through the internet. Uh, we look at how we can go to a site and decide, well, you know, I really believe that's true or I don't believe that's true. The net generation tends to have that gut feeling uh, that they understand when, when somebody's pulling their leg on something. So it's, it's kind of interesting that, that you guys chose that as an example. Um, as you go through also, notice that scrutiny is being able to research and tell if something is true or find out what the real deal is. So we should be kind of expecting companies to, to show us, to be transparent, show us the real deal because we're going to check them out. We're going to make sure they're on the up and up. And the same place, uh, we have to be careful of Facebook and things like that. Uh, Don Tapscott tells us that we have to be careful in our generation that with Facebook, Companies are going to check us out. So 20 years down the line, we need to make sure that things we're doing, that we're putting out on the web, are a fair representation of who we want to be uh, out there on the web. So just like we're checking companies out, they're going to be checking us out as well. Go. Hey, me and Miles did Integrity on Chapter 3, um, the book by Tap Scott. And Integrity, he describes... He says that the net generation, he says that we care about being honest and considerate and that we want to be, we want people to be, you know, we don't want people to lie to us and we want people to abide by the commitments that they tell us. And he first starts off and he's describing that we do really want people to be honest with us. We don't want people to lie to us and if somebody tells us that something's going to happen, we expect it to happen. Like if we wanted to get on a website and it we've been told that this website is supposed to do something for us, we want it to do exactly what they, what those people told us that it was going to do. And he goes into describing this psychologist named Professor um, Jean Twang, and she calls us narcissistic, and she says that she believes that we are Generation Me. That 
she thinks that we think only of ourselves and that we don't have uh, the basic requirements like a sense of community or we don't have good relationships with each other. And she believes that we care only of ourselves and that we really don't care about people being honest with us and that we don't really feel that people need to be honest with us, which is a lie. Um, Tapscott goes through and he says that he thinks that this narcissist, like this narcissism that she believes, she thinks is more, he thinks that it is more of a gain of confidence rather than us being obsessed with ourselves. And he talks about how our generation is more tolerant of other people, that we will be more able to adjust to new changes in technology and in other things, and that we are more adjusting to people, especially different people that we get to meet. And he goes in and he says that, he starts talking about honesty and how we really do value honesty, and he says that 70% of teenagers that he has interviewed said that if they thought that a company or a commercial was lying to them and that they thought that a product wasn't really going to do what it promised, that they would tell their friends and that they would tell their friends not to buy it. So he, that pretty much shows that we do care about what people tell us and that we want people to tell us the truth and we want people to fill up to their commitments on what they tell us they're going to do. And that's pretty much what he's talking about in this integrity section. We want people to tell us the truth, and we want people to be honest with us, which I think is completely true. And that's what he talked about for integrity. All right. Go. <laughs> when you collaborate, you work together towards a common goal. Teenagers today use technology to collaborate in every aspect of their lives. We need to collaborate. I need to know how many walkers we have. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there are eight in this section. Cool. Teenagers today use both their phones and the internet to communicate and to aid in their collaboration. 17, 18, 19. There are 19 walkers on this side. 52, 53, 54. There are 54 lockers on this side. Send. Alright, so nowadays technology and entertainment are really uh, incorporated nowadays, especially in the workplace. Yeah, uh, Google now, they have rock climbing walls and the Xbox that you can relax and enjoy and still have fun while you work. Like um, some studies have shown, like this book, it says that, uh, he says that we used to, like back in the old days, when you, we had a break to blow off steam, we'd go down, we'd smoke a, a cigarette maybe. And, uh, complain about the manager, the manager or something like that. Complain about the manager, yeah. And so nowadays, um, you know, taking 20 minutes just to stop and play an online game can have the same effect. You can blow off some steam. And he says that sometimes, you know, maybe getting your mind off of what you're trying to figure out, yeah, it generates new ideas and it can help you solve the problem you're on. So it's really helpful today in the work environment. And also in colleges now, they also have a lot of rec places and places where you can chill out after working hard at school and having your studies and after a big test. You can just go out, chill out with your friends and then regenerate new ideas for your projects and stuff. So what it's saying is that, you know, we used to have this time for work, and so a time for recreation. And what, if, you know, technology is doing is, what we're doing is we're merging that, and we're merging it effectively. That's, that's about it. We Read Speed, which is basically has to do with our generation wanting everything as fast as possible. Like, nowadays we have instant messaging as opposed to email back in the 90s, which they only had. Now we have instant messaging, which allows us to see who is online and who is offline. Like, you can message people who are online, and if you message them, they don't message back. You can see if they're online or not, which creates you having an anxious thought or something. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. That's exactly true. You can set examples. <laughs> if someone doesn't, if someone doesn't, like, text me right away, I get the feeling they're ignoring me, and I get offended. Like, why isn't Megan texting me back? What's she trying to say? Then I call her, I'm like, and then she doesn't an answer, and then I freak out, oh great, Megan's dead, blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah. Same with my boyfriend. I text him. He doesn't text me back. Oh, John's dead. That's great. So then I got to call him, and then he doesn't answer, and then I think he's dead. Emails are way too slow. I email someone a resume. They don't email me back. Great. I'm not going to get a job. That's awesome. So, you know what? I think this is a good thing. Everyone should be, <laughs> everyone should be fast because then everyone's problems would be solved and no one would have to wait. It does create a very thinking. anxious state of mind because you are always waiting for that one text or that one call. It's a good thing, though. It keeps everyone on their toes. Yeah, it keeps everyone on their toes and more aware of things if you are in the speed generation of ours right now. The end. Hey, Elena, look at this new phone I got. It's an iPhone 3G. You can search the web, get on Twitter, and send messages. It's awesome. Siri can do that for me. Siri? I have the iPhone 4S. Siri, can you take me to Twitter? Oh my gosh. That just makes my phone seem like, like a caveman. It is. And look, um, she took me to Twitter. Well now... Did you just buy phone? that? Yeah. I, I think you're fun. running behind.